Happy holidays, everyone! As per tradition, I every year come in here and tell you about the best games that I've played this year. And I have this formula last year that worked really fine, and that is I split my game of the year into two separate lists. Now listen up, this is confusing. The first list will consist of the best games that I have played that are not necessarily released in this year, but I played them in 2020. And in this category, I also put ports and remakes. Does that make sense? <laughs> and in the other list, I will be having the games that are actually new this year that I also played. So I will have a top five on this side and a top five on that side. There has just been so many good games this year and I am still keeping up with and playing 2017, 18, 19 games. I feel so oversaturated with games. So when I made this list, I actually found out that I have been playing 30 games this year. And if you are disappointed by my picks in this video, don't worry, I have honorable mentions at the end of both of these lists. Okay, so the first list. At number five, I gotta say Call of Juarez. <laughs> I was super obsessed with this game when I discovered it. And that was early in 2020, like January, February, March, I don't know. But it is a first person shooter by Techland for the Nintendo Switch. It's also out on several other consoles, but I played it on the Switch. To say it like this, I beat the game twice and I collected all the collectibles. I 100%ed this game because it was so good. It has an old western theme and it has superb gyro controls. I played this mostly in handheld and I love my gyro controls in handheld. And it is just simply fun. So it is a mission-based first-person shooter. I reviewed this game and I called it a hidden gem because I felt like not many people talked about it. On fourth place of games that I played this year, Astral Chain. And that is an exclusive game for the Nintendo Switch. In my opinion, it has one of the best graphics in the entire Switch library. You play as a police officer in a kind of post-apocalyptic world, which is in an extra-dimensional war against chimeras, and you use your legatus, that is the thing on your arm, to control certain chimeras and use them in battle. It has a deep lore, and I love the art style, and it was just fun, again, fun gameplay, like actually fun. The gameplay, the combat, it was all super smooth and I just was very impressed with this game and I hadn't played it before so I played it this year and it was one of the more memorable games that I have played this year. I loved it. <laughs> I did a review of this game too so you can check out my review. I will put a card in the corner, you know sometimes you can hit the only, you probably know that. Alright, alright you two, focus. Okay, so in third place, actually Oninaki made an impression on me, so that is my third place. But it's also a game that I played on the Nintendo Switch, and it is a hack and slash ARPG by Tokyo RPG Factory, and it is just gorgeous with the colors, and it has a demo, so you can try the demo, I mean, right now, if you want to. It is out on several systems, published by Square Enix, actually. It just had a great and engaging story. It's a, such a dark theme to the entire game. The gameplay is strong, addicting, and it's just an awesome game. And I loved it. Check out my review for this game as well. It seems like I have reviewed all of these games, but uh, yeah, I love them this year. And I really recommend all of these games. Now in second place, I love this game. This game, whoa. <laughs> this is one of the games that I played the most this year in terms of hours played. And I'm talking about Dragon Quest Builders 2. Me and my cousin, we were obsessed and we had such a great time with this game that I will just never forget the good times. It is a sandbox building and crafting game by Square Enix and Omega Force. It is one of the longer or biggest Switch games that I can think of. It's in the big category of game. It's long. It is such a long game. It is fantastic. And actually, I just love this game so much. 
You play as a builder who builds things with an actual long storyline. The game has a great sense of freedom and you get to be as creative as you want to be. And quite honestly, I can't recommend this game enough. It is just simply filled to the brim with content. <laughs> And I have so many great memories with this game, so I definitely highly recommend Dragon Quest Builders 2 as well. <laughs> Number one of what I have played personally this year, it was actually Assassin's Creed Origins that I started playing around Covid times. Uh, I guess I played it in March or something. So yeah, I was actually the most impressed with a 2017 game in 2020. <laughs> because this is, to date, the closest thing to Breath of the Wild that I've come, except for Genshin, of course, but it is in that vibe. So it is super open world, and it is just magical, and it is such a huge world, and I remember being so impressed with this world and this setting and the entire like adventure of it all. And I really took the game all in, and I was Again, I feel like this is the only thing I ever say. I was obsessed with this game, but I really was asking anyone. I couldn't stop talking about this game, and I made a video about this game, so a uh, link to that in the corner and down below. I mean, I'm linking to all videos in the description. Just read the description box. Link to everything. Yeah. And it was just filled with freedom, side quests, and of course a strong main story. And you could really choose your own playstyle. And the setting is set in Egypt, with like pyramids and stuff. I absolutely love this game. It was just so cozy and warm. Mm. Assassin's Creed Origins, it is a lot on sale on PlayStation Store. I 100%ed this game too. I did all side quests, I explored everything, and I played the two DLCs, which are two extra continents. And in this game you can also collect costumes and mounts. I collected everything. I did everything in the game. And the graphics are just gorgeous. Breathtaking. Now I have some honorable mentions to this uh, first category. Rune Factory 4, such a good game. I have a review up on that game. I have also played a lot of Two Point Hospital, Pokemon Shield, which I also reviewed, the Atelier Trilogy, and that is the Dusk Trilogy. Also did a review of that. Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, also did a review of that. <laughs> Can you see a pattern here? I also played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, also did a review of that. And Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Now this is a game that I truly, highly, super much recommend. Also did a review of that. Sniper Elite 3 was also a super good game that I played this year. Mario 3D All-Stars. <laughs> Need I say more? No. I also played Crystar, Mario Skelter 2. I'm currently playing Mario Skelter 2. Like, now. Sort of thing. Death and Request 1. I'm gonna talk more about that series soon. Dragon Star Warner, Sword Art, Fatal Bullet, and Warface. Just some games that I've been enjoying this year. So, yeah, definitely that. Now we have gotten to the official list of the official game of the year of 2020. The actual releases of this year. Now, don't be mad, but in fifth place, you're gonna be mad. I gotta say Cyberpunk. And the only reason it isn't higher on my list is because I haven't played it enough. And the only reason it is on my list is because I haven't experienced too many glitches or errors on it. I like the game. I like the universe. And most of all, the gameplay is fun. Like the actual gunplay. I was so curious. How are CD Projekt Red gonna do the gunplay? Because sometimes in some shooters you don't really feel that you're wielding a gun and that it is powerful at all. They did good on the actual gunplay. So I was very satisfied with how shooting felt. And the funny thing is that I didn't think that I would like this game. I bought it spontaneously. I just wasn't planning on picking it up at all. But this is like Ishamance's game of the year and he's been talking about it for years. So that is like his most hyped game ever and I didn't want to miss out. <laughs> I am enjoying the game and like the real game 
And yeah, I've had some crashes and that basically happens when I try to fast travel. So I save my game before I decide on fast traveling because that is when I get my crashes in the game. I have played for 10 hours and I think I've seen the error crash screen five times. Other than that, nothing game breaking. I have had a superb time so far. And the story has kind of surprised me and I feel really immersed. If I'm gonna describe the game with one word, it is immersive. And I didn't think that would happen to me, that I would really care for the characters and care for the story. And it is such easy storytelling that you get to know the names and the faces of the essential NPCs in the game quite quickly. I felt like that. It feels like you are there when you're playing so immersive is what I want to say so far but it is too early for me to say a definitive opinion on this game but the gameplay is like this you have a great sense of freedom it is an open world you can go anywhere you can see side quests on the map you can see shops on the map you can change out your outfit and customize your own character even though you always play in first person mode you never really see your character but it is a sense of RPGing that I like and it has crafting and it has modding you can mod your weapons and just wow and basically it is the most lived in game world that I've seen in forever I think it feels like I never come across anything that is copy pasted it is simply a believable world and it reminds me of Fallout 4. Okay, so in fourth place of actual release in 2020, Ghost of Tsushima, which is a PS4 exclusive and it is the best performing game of 2020. Did you know that this game performs so well that they had to artificially extend the loading screens with one second just so you could see the hints and tips and tricks that are on the loading screen because otherwise you wouldn't see them because the loading screens are so fast. I mean compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla which is like you can you can take a shower while the loading screen is doing its thing. In Ghost of Tsushima you play as a samurai who is taking back the Japan island of Tsushima. So it is again an open world which I highly recommend because this game also has a great sense of freedom with a good map with objectives and side quests and you can collect a bunch of stuff and the combat is fun. Like this is actual fun combat. So much better than Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I like Ghost of Tsushima way more than Valhalla and I talk about this game in this video. So you can check out that video if you want to see more on Ghost of Tsushima. Okay, now we are getting into the weirder side of uh, this top 5 uh, games of 2020. Because this is a game that I am betting that you have not heard about. And that is Death and Request 2. The reason for this game being... The reason for this game being on my top 5 games of 2020 is because it just made a real impression on me. The story made me go, whoa. So as you can guess, this is a game that you play for the story. It is a part visual novel and part turn-based RPG by ID Factory and Compile Heart. And the art style in this game is out of this world. I love this art style. This is officially now my favorite artist, Kei Nanamera. I love it. And the writing is the best I have seen in years. I don't know why I felt so invested in this particular story, but I was because it's really dark and it's just well written. And I have almost platinum trophied this game on PlayStation 4. I like the combat. I think the combat is great. The level design in itself is somewhat lacking, but this is a game with a lower budget than most games. And the story, art style and music just simply makes up for all of that. I got this game at first as a review code from ID Factory. Thank you. But I went and bought the limited edition as well. I'm gonna make a separate video on that 
But yeah, I, I had to buy the limited edition of this game as well, because I loved it that much. It took me 32 hours to do the first playthrough, and immediately after my first playthrough, I wanted to play it again. Because it had the most surprising ending. I was so shocked with the ending. And that is gonna change my entire perspective going into the game again, starting anew, with what I know now after the ending. Just keep in mind that this is a part visual novel, if you decide to pick it up. <laughs> a lot of story. Now in second place of what I have played, that was also actually released this year, Animal Crossing. I had a great time with Animal Crossing even though I lost my island and I think I can now recover my island from my cousin's Switch gonna do that maybe, but I have to admit that I had a great time with the game when I was playing it. Played it for 120 hours I think, which is nothing. I've seen people have over a thousand hours in this game. But you know, I lost my save file and all of that and I started anew. But I kind of have bittersweet feelings towards losing the save file. Just give me some time and I will crawl back to it, I'm sure. Now in first place, and I just know that you saw this one coming, the best game of 2020, winning the official Game of the Year award in 2020 is Genshin Impact. Actually also a free game, can't believe that. Uh, I just had to make two videos of this game actually on my channel and I was just so obsessed. Right now I'm taking a break from the game because I've done everything so I'm just waiting for more content, waiting for the bigger expansions that they are planning on releasing with new continents and such and then I will dive back into the game because it's just such a shockingly good game. Open world game on PC, PlayStation 4, Android, iOS and I recommend playing it on the PC because it doesn't perform well on the PlayStation 4 and it is a game by Mihojo. It is an open world action combat game that has a perfect performance in my opinion and I am impressed with the amount of content and the things you can do and you collect playable characters with elements to them and in this game you can do domains, events, quests, crafting and just exploration also in multiplayer and it has such awesome combat where you can swap out your characters inflicting several elemental advantages on your enemies it has a great map it is free watch my two videos of this game and you will see what i mean Now, honorable mentions to this category, Paper Mario, which I'm trying to like, but I don't quite feel it yet. Minecraft Dungeons was also released in 2020. Hyrule Warriors, which I will be starting to play today. <laughs> Among Us, lol. Immortals Phoenix Rising, which I haven't played much, I have to admit. And of course, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I'm still like 20 hours into, because I took a break from the game after 20 hours. Another thing is that no one can play all games, but these were just my lists. Now of course I want to know what your game of the year is. If you enjoyed my video, or in general my videos, please subscribe to my channel. That would mean a lot to me. I want to say happy holidays and I hope you are well. And that you play a lot of good games this holiday. I know I will. Um, this sweater is from Numskull, link to it down below, because they sent me this. Look, it's cute. <laughs>